the title. The Knicks then loaded up and they said, don't count us out. Philly made a huge splash in free agency, signing Paul George, re-signing Tyrese Maxey and Kelly Oubre, adding Eric Gordon and Caleb Martin. Here's PG on joining the Sixers on the podcast P with Paul George presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. I never wanted to leave L.A. L.A. is home. This is where I wanted to finish at. I wanted to work as hard as possible to win one in L.A. Like, that was the goal, to be here and be committed to L.A. As it played out, though, like, the first initial deal was, I thought, kind of disrespectful. George's move to Philly ends a five-year run with the Clippers. Third time he's changed squads after making an all-star team the previous year. Now he teams up with Joel Embiid, the 2023 MVP, who sat down with Tim Bontemps to talk about it. A year ago, right now, there was a lot of uncertainty with the Sixers. Didn't know what's going to happen with James. The roster's up in the air. A lot of talk about uncertainty about the future. Now, you got Paul George, you got you, you got Tyrese Maxey. What is your thoughts on the way things have changed over the last year and where you guys sit? On paper, it looks like a pretty good team. It feels like you're starting, you know, from scratch. And uh, I know there's going to be a lot of growing pains, um, but you just got to stick it together. And the goal is always to win a championship, but it just doesn't happen overnight. But we're going to do the best job possible. With the three of you guys together, do you feel like it is as good of a fit because you have the pieces that should really fit together ideally well on the court. Yeah, I think as far as the fit, it looks amazing. When you got a player that, you know, that post up and the ISOs quite a bit, uh, you need to have willing shooters and guys like that, you know, not afraid to pull the trigger. And, you know, you know PG, great shooter, 40%, think 45, catch mm -hmm. and shoot. You know, Tyrese, we know it. Great shooter off the dribble, catch and shoot. And then you got, you also got me. So um, yeah, it looks great. Was there a point over the last year where your patience waned at all? Where you weren't sure about how this was gonna end? Or did you, or did you have faith the whole time that this was ultimately gonna land in a good place? I, I'll be lying to say that, uh, you know, the, that patience was tested uh, because I'm at the point where you know, there's no awards that don't change the way, uh, you know, my legacy is. But the main one is the championship. So when you start thinking about, you know, what you want to be remembered at, you know, you want to be remembered as someone that's won. The key is always help and firmly believe it every year uh, that I play uh, this game. You know, I just believe that I just get that one chance to be, you know, free and healthy. Um, I, I, along with my teammates, I believe we can be. Dallas, it's, it's tough. It's, uh, it's something that we, I never imagined would be a reality. But, you know, you want him to be happy. You want him to be able to enjoy the game of basketball. It does suck leaving, losing Clay. There's no, no two ways around it. So, um, you have to be able to celebrate what we accomplished, but then be able to move on. It's going to be weird. Curry and Thompson and Green made the final six times as teammates the most by any trio of all NBA teammates over the last 50 seasons. Four of those trips ended with the title. Tie with Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker for the most titles by an all-star NBA trio over that same span. In the NBA, from a 19-year-old high school phenom to a veteran of 21 seasons who's won four titles and rewritten the record books, it's been an unprecedented career. So it makes sense that next season, as he turns 40, he'll do something else that nobody's done before. He'll come full circle, playing in the league with his 19-year-old son, Bronny. LeBron sat down with Dave McMenamin to put it all into perspective. We're going to have a chance to talk about some history yeah. in the fall. <laughs> with the 55th pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select... Bronny James. LeBron James yeah. and Bronny James yeah, yeah. will not only be the first teammates to be father-son duo mm -hmm. in the league history. It's the first time it's ever happened, period. Yeah. yeah. Just take me back to New York. What was that moment like for you? Um, it was very emotional. It was very emotional to uh, to hear. Uh, I mean, that's, that's been his, his dream for quite a while. He said he wants to play in the NBA. And, you know, and 
then he had an opportunity to talk to his agent, Rich Paul, and Rich asked him what, what is his ultimate goal in this whole thing. And he said, I just want to hear my name called. And for it to happen, you know, with us all being together and him being able to hear his name called an NBA draft, it's like a moment that we will never, ever forget. Between the lines, to yeah. some extent, fastball is going to take care of itself. Yeah, for, for sure. But outside of those lines, he's starting to have some of the same arrows slung at him that you had when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. What's it going to take for him to withstand that? Um, I don't know if people really understand Bronny. He doesn't care. I actually cared a little bit when I came in. I wanted people to like, like me and yeah. some of the things that people were saying about me, it kind of bothered me early on in my career. I let it get to me. Bronny doesn't, he doesn't give a He doesn't. He, Bronny plays, he works his tail off. When he's done, he goes home and plays his video game. He does not care about nobody. He's, he doesn't even listen to that stuff. He's like the complete opposite of his dad. <laughs> his dad will say something. Yeah. Bronny does not care. Like me personally, when I was coming up, I had no choice. Mm -hmm. I literally had no choice. I had to make it out. Like I had no choice. I had to make it out for me my mom, my family. Bronny has all the choices in the world. So it's like a whole nother, people don't understand how hard that is in the commitment. For him to be coming out of heart surgery less than a year ago, for him to be able to, to be in the NBA, that's, the kid is, he's, he's special, but he doesn't care. He doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't bother him. We have breaking news. Just six days after drafting Bronny James, the Lakers have signed his father. You signed a new contract with yep. the Lakers. It, potentially could take you through 23 seasons <laughs> in the NBA, which is a pretty good number. Yes, it is uh, good. It's a great number. Do you think this could be the last deal you ever signed as an NBA player? I mean, it could be. Um, I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, uh, uh, maybe not. Yeah, it could be, easily. But um, we'll see what happens. Rich Paul told me, uh, leading up to you signing that deal, that you'd be willing to take a pay cut mm -hmm. to sign an impact player. But here we sit. Clay Thompson's with the Dallas Mavericks, DeMar DeRozan's with the Sacramento Kings. What do you think happens? Um, it takes two to tangle. I mean, at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, our front office and our coaching staff, they try to do the job that they wanted to do or try to get guys to come and it just, it didn't happen. And that's okay, that's part of the, it's part of the business. Since 2020, as the team had its ups and downs, we've yeah. had some private conversations yeah. about just how much winning still matters to you. Yeah. You know, you have all the accolades, we talked about the stuff you've been able to earn through this mm -hmm. game, but you still want to win. Can you do it here with the Lakers between now and the end of your career? Can, yeah. can it happen again? Of course. Of course. What gives you that confidence? Because we've done it before. And that's it. It's over. This historic 2020 NBA championship belongs to the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers conquer the bubble, and banner number 17 will soon hang in the rafters. We still have two guys who commit every single day and myself and AD we commit to excellence and commit to winning. We're not that far off. You know, we were one year removed from the Western Conference Finals. This past year didn't go as well as we would like, but we're not that far off. And there's so many teams in the league, you know, so many great teams in the league in the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference, but we don't see that we are that far off anyways. Now LeBron in Vegas, of course the road to Paris as they get ready and try to gel together here for training camp. Uh, they can bring home a fifth straight gold medal uh, in Paris later this month. How about Steph Curry, first to arrive Thursday, ready to get going in his first Olympics. Team USA starting their Olympic journey on July 28th when they face off against Nikola Jokic and Serbia. Joining them in Group C is South Sudan and Puerto Rico. Hey, we got some new sound coming in on SportsCenter. Tyrese Halliburton on whether it's gold medal or bust for this roster. Hey, nice. That's the standard of USA basketball, and that's not ever going to change. You know, it's, it's part of the honor of wearing this jersey and the privilege of wearing this jersey. Yeah, that's the, the standard, and you know, I don't think any of us would have it any other way. You know, all that matters is if we come home with the gold medal. So having that mindset and having guys that, you know, understand that you have to change a little bit, like still be yourself. You know, be who you are that got you to this point. Uh, but you know, we all have to change a, a little bit and our roles or whatever we have to do um, in order for us to, to try to win.
Tatum with the fresh cut and fresh off that championship. And uh, NBA reporter Tim Bontemps is on the scene in Las Vegas and joins us now with much more on this squad. Tim, you had the chance to catch up with uh, the new NBA champion Tatum just a few minutes ago. What did he share with you about his very busy offseason so far? Well, as you said, Kevin, it's been a whirlwind couple of weeks for Jason Tatum, who just a couple of weeks ago won his first NBA championship, said the greatest two hours of his life were the parade in Boston a couple of weeks ago, then saw Celtics owner Wick Grusbeck announce he was going to sell the team, something Tatum admitted came as much of a surprise to him as anybody else. And now he is here with Team USA today after missing the first two days of practice, in part because he was signing an NBA record $300 plus million dollar extension on Saturday at the end of the NBA's moratorium. Said he was thrilled to be able to commit himself long term to the Celtics, was equally thrilled to be part of this Team USA group as he's looking to win a second gold medal with this team after being part of this group in Tokyo and said that overall he is thrilled with where the Boston Celtics are at, bringing back virtually their entire roster to defend their NBA championship. So things are looking good on just about every level for Jason Tatum and the Celtics, and he is happy to be here in Las Vegas with Team USA. Hey, this roster has all the talent in the world, and uh, before Tatum came into the NBA, he was a star at Duke. And let, let's stay here with this Duke crossover. There was a player for the select team that really stole all the attention in a scrimmage this afternoon against Team USA. Tim, what are people saying about Duke commit Cooper Flag? Well, this is a pretty remarkable story, Kevin. You've got Cooper Flag, who is 17 years old. He doesn't turn 18 until December. And when he was born in 2006, in December 2006, Kevin Durant was in his freshman year at, at Texas, and LeBron James was in his fourth NBA season. And he was out here in this scrimmage with the select team going toe-to-toe -to -toe with those guys and really dominated the final portions of that scrimmage. I saw our P.J. Carlissimo afterward, and he was joking with Matt Painter, one of the select team coaches, that Painter doesn't have Duke on the schedule and will not have them on the schedule now after seeing Cooper Flag in this game. And I asked Tatum about the way Cooper Flag played and going to, as you said, his alma mater in Duke. And he said that he looked every bit the part of a guy who fit being out here on the court, despite the fact he's the first college player to be part of the select team since Doug McDermott and Marcus Smart back in 2013. And those guys were already well into their college careers when they were here playing against Team USA. Cooper Flagg hasn't even played in a college basketball game yet. And that's why the executive on hand here wanted to see him play, because he right now is projected by our Jonathan Gavoni as the number one pick in next year's NBA yeah, draft. And by the way, if you go on social media anytime today, you are going to see Flag matched up against this team. Pretty cool stuff there. Tim, thank you so much with the very latest from Vegas. And more from Team US.
love.